Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Agogi TV. I'm your host Phil Leonard and joining me shortly is my co-host Josh Summersgill. On today's show our guest is JST, boss man, head honcho and mastermind Stephen Fawcett. Steve was previously a CrossFit Games competitor. He competed in, at the individual level and as a team on the JST Compete team. Uh, Steve's super knowledgeable about everything CrossFit related uh, he trains people to an elite level, he works with a lot of our games bound competitors and even some up and comers in the sport which we discuss in detail. Uh, not only do we discuss in detail some of the stuff about around training elite athletes but we do have a good laugh about lots of things um, from him uh, sitting on sandbags at the CrossFit Games to uh, sleep sharing a bed with the legend that is Mikey Steele who is hopefully due to be on the show shortly. So please enjoy the show guys. As always, before we get into the show, please like, subscribe and share. Hit the subscribe button on YouTube, on iTunes and if possible, please give us a five star review or a like. As always, check out our sponsor xenjoyance.eu. You can check them out uh, and use the code AGOGITV20 for 20% off at checkout. Right guys, here we go. Uh, so, welcome back to Agogi TV. Uh, Steve, welcome to the show, mate. How are you doing, buddy? I'm good, thank you. Thanks for having us on. Good stuff, good stuff. Uh, obviously, first things first, Steve, we always like to ask people, one, how you got into CrossFit, and then two, like how you became, like, so obviously you're, you're in charge of JST Compete and JST Train as well, I believe. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and how you come... How you come to going from starting CrossFit to obviously ten years later running one of the biggest uh, online training programs in the UK? Yeah, um, I mean, I probably got into CrossFit just like most other people saw something on YouTube. Um, you know, back it was 2010 when I got into it, so you know there wasn't that much. It was actually an Adidas advert with Chris Spieler that got me interested, nice. um, and. Yeah, just started researching it. Um, you know, I, I was playing football to a decent level at the time, and it kind of CrossFit just kind of took over, and I just got more. I just was more interested then in doing my CrossFit training than playing playing football. Much to um, a lot of you know coaches or players that I was playing with disagreement. Um, but I just and you know I just pursued it. I knew I knew that it was something that I was that I had a, a future in. Yeah, and. Um, yeah, I just I feel like throughout my you know throughout growing up growing up from when I started doing sport from five to twenty twenty two I think it's when I started CrossFit I was doing every sport going I think yeah. name of a, name a sport I did it like whether it was at a club or at school and I got I was the annoying kid that was like good at everything quite quick but I was never like hey, amazing at one. yeah like amazing at one. Do you know what I mean? I was never like the best person at one sport. I was just like quite good at them all. Yeah. Um, what does that sound like? <laughs> <laughs> no, right. But average at everything. <laughs> well, like is, that, is that you, Jack? Yeah. No, no, I was just saying that that's what CrossFit is, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It, yeah, exactly. yeah. It, it is also Josh as well, though. He's that guy. Yeah. Like, no, there's some things I'm not very good at. That. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not, yeah, I'm not like, very at basketball. <laughs> 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 I've got all we've got on Josh is out of rowing and shit at, and that's it. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, rowing can fuck off. You know <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so that, so then when I think CrossFit and when it's like, it's like, there's so much varied stuff in it, I was like, this is what I was, this is what I was made to yeah. do. I wish I'd found it earlier, but it just wasn't around that much earlier. Mate. That was 2010 when I found it. I think it was only around a couple of years before that. So, uh, yeah, just got into it. And because I, it's so early when I got into it, you know, I was learning as I was going and picked up as much knowledge as, as I could from other, any coaches that were around, anyone that I feel could help me. Yeah. Um, just kind of absorbed as much as possible, kind of took the good things, ignored the bad things, and just kind of made my own decisions of what would work and what isn't. And, uh, yeah, over time, that's just developed into improving me as a coach as well. Um, and yeah, and then leading on then to to build JST Compete and you know offer a service uh, 
you know, that's open to anyone. Which is what, what I want to achieve with GS to compete is giving all the information, resources, like everything that I didn't have when I started. I can have it all in, in one place. Um, so, you know, if you want nutrition advice, we've got something there. If you want mindset advice, we've got mindset, we've got something there. Training, just like just anything, just like the go-to for, you know, if someone wants to get better at CrossFit, yeah. other than going to a CrossFit class, like if they want something, they want more than what they get in a CrossFit class, then, um, yeah, be the, be the yeah. people that, the, or the person that um, offers it. For sure, for sure. And obviously, in, in between that, you obviously was the first UK guy to go to the games. Is that right? Or is that like, is that, a, or I believe that's like a little sneak. Everyone thinks you're the first and actually you were the second. Yeah. Well, so that uh, was the first person, first UK athlete to qualify to the games out of regionals. Right. Okay. Right. Because there was a lad called Jamie who back in 2009, I think, qualified out of sectionals or something. Oh, that was when it was easy to qualify, it's fine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I actually know, I trained him a few times in the early career. He turned into a weightlifter at that point. He's, he's, a, he's a sound guy and uh, yeah, I think he accepts that the standard was a, a big difference from 2009 until 2015. Yeah, for sure. And obviously, you first guy out of regionals to, to head to the Games um, and... I, I always remember spotting you in the uh, the fittest on earth documentary, sitting on your sandbags. Um, <laughs> but what a surprise! Like what a surprise! Another podcast where <laughs> we talk about sandbags and fucking wheelbarrows. Another podcast, fucking hell, lad. I just like no, I just like firing I'm shots. I'm sick to death of talking about it. <laughs> I haven't even seen it. I was, <laughs> I, I was actually going to ask you about what was the best part part of being at the games, so. <laughs> Because yeah. we because we all know about sitting on the sandbags, so like what 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 was what was the standout moment for you? Um, there was yeah, if, if, there was many good events. Ones that I remember there was there was, there was a max cleaning jerk, which um, I think I did one forty four then. Um, but I was I was in as the lightest listed uh, athlete at the games that year, and to come twelfth on that as the lightest athlete, I was I was buzzing over that. Plus, clean and jerks like my favourite lift, and then to be able to get that, get the chance to do my favourite lift on the tennis stadium yeah. when like sun was beaming, there's like thousands of people watching. That was just, uh, yeah, that was incredible. Is that um, as awesome as it looks when you see it? Because everyone, the thing, everyone talks about how good it is. It is, it is good, but I wish I could also be there and watch me doing it as well. Because when you're right. in there doing it, you so yeah. like I'm so focused about lifting this way and my barbell, but I'm trying not to be distracted and look around and take in the, the atmosphere. Yeah, like yeah. When, when I finished, I think we only got two lifts. When I'd done my second lift, like that's when you could look around and go, yes, but you know, the moment's kind of over then, isn't it? So yeah, yeah, that's yeah. the hardest thing. That, like, when people say, what, what's like, what was the atmosphere like? like how did it feel? It's just like, you're that bothered about your performing. You can't really be distracted and take it all in. Or I, I personally don't can't don't feel like I can because I feel like I need to stay like focused. Yeah. yeah. Um, since then, like I've watched, you know, I watched them back, and um, you know, when I've watched any of the events back, that's when I, that's when you get that feeling. But it's obviously not the same as being in the crowd yeah. and seeing it. I actually, um, the following year, I went and spectated. In 2016, I went and spectated the games. Right. And it was in, that was the last year it was in, uh, in Carson. In Carson, yeah. yeah. And that really helped me, like, like, have a bit more kind of, like, respect for myself for getting there because I could watch it. And I was like, this is what it was like when I was there last year. Obviously, yeah. it was gutting to be there and, and only be, well, then be spectating. But at the same time, it gave me so much more, like, uh, appreciation for myself for what I'd achieved the year before just by being there. Yeah, yeah. I think, I no think, small task getting there, is no. it? Let's face it. Yeah. I think when you're caught up in those things as well, like you, you don't realise that you are like the top one percent in the world at a sport. Um, yeah. but, but when you're training to win at something, it doesn't matter whether you're the top one percent. You want to be not point not one percent, don't you? <laughs> yeah. It's like, yeah. Um, but. Yeah. I wanted to ask as well. Like, obviously, you you competed as a you competed as an individual, and then you went as a team. Um, yeah. What were the like differences in those two experiences? 
Yeah, the, the, the main thing was, and why I wanted to do the team as well, is that it was a, just a different change of mindset to, it, to training and my lifestyle just being about me. Yeah. I'd kind of, I'd done that for years and years at that point and I was kind of, you know, just not, you could probably say fed up with it, just kind of sick of everything revolving around my training and my performance and what weight I could lift and what rowing splits I could hold and what I could deadlift and whatever. Yeah. It, the team, there's so many more factors into it. It's how we work together as a team. It's not just how I perform, it's how Jack's performing, Megan, Jane, Oakley, Ben, whatever. Yeah. Uh, and there was a lot more to it. And because obviously I had the background in football and team sports, it it brought back um, you know a lot of good like members of being in a team and like that just that team environment. Um, and that kind of yeah, that got me through well until last season really when when competition stopped. But um, that's got me through the last, the next few years of, of training with it not just being about my own performance. Yeah. Um, and it kind of tied in well with me being taking more of a coach coach role as well because I could still perform. But I was coaching the guys I was in the team with, so it was kind of like a you know, a step between the two. Um, still stressful, like it is, yeah. you know, it's, you still try to compete at the highest level and not trying to fuck anything up. Yeah. If anything, it, it was more stressful because because I was a captain, I had the ownership of making the decisions, making the team selection, um, you know, who goes where, making the calls on the worm and any like workout strategy it usually came down to me to decide it so it was kind of like I had the ownership of that whilst having to try and perform and be in with the team so yeah it was just uh equally as stressful in a different in a different way yeah for sure and I mean in that as well you also managed to um slap down for owning the team in all the endurance events which is it extra impressive when we look at the? <laughs> is it extra impressive when, like, say, you're one of the lighter athletes? Uh, yeah. I know Jack's not one of the lighter athletes, but we, we'll, we'll ignore that. Um, the, the all, yeah, the all involved running in the, in uh, our our defence. Everything that we beat Ronan that involved running. Yeah, yeah. Uh, which obviously he he's not known to be the best at. He's he's good at running, but um, but not as good as you. That's the point. <laughs> exactly. Well, Phil always says how much he enjoyed doing the running when he went down to JST with you guys. Yeah, yeah, and everyone yeah, just ran yeah. off. <laughs> I was like, where is everyone going? <laughs> <laughs> like, bye, guys. <laughs> uh, we, everyone in our team and everyone that's been in our teams have always had a background of usually football, but always running. Um, yeah, and, and I think, you, you know, your American teams, the backgrounds that they come into are more strength and conditioning like power based sports yeah. Yeah. where you don't have you know you're not running 10k a match or um, you know our strength and conditioning in the UK is star jumps and running around a the pitch there's his power cleans and box jumps so yeah. you know it explains why they're stronger than us and we're fitter than them yeah for sure that's a good point that as well I, it's not actually something I've ever thought about the difference yeah. between our UK and US, well, that that does that's a good point. Yeah. I think you, you probably class Europe in that same kind of culture of, of like sports that sports that European countries are good at, and then you put sports that American, you know, America's good at. Yeah. Like, there's a huge, yeah, you know, sure, it's a huge um, evidence that they're just that well, they're better at power based sports because those sports are bigger in their country, yeah, so yeah. they're more likely to get brought into it when they're young. Whereas yeah. we get brought into cross country running and swimming and cycling and football. Yeah. yeah, for sure. And obviously JST is actually well known for its endurance program. And I think obviously Reggie we had on the podcast recently, he helped out with that and um, by winning the bloody road yeah. event. Like, yeah, yeah, pay me a few twenty quids. <laughs> <laughs> but but definitely he's um like you guys developed, and I know when, like, I was, when I was on JST a long time ago now, um, there, was, there was a big endurance component, especially on the rower. Um, yeah. How did you come about developing those programmes? Is it just something that sort of you, you realised there was a need for? Or? Uh, yeah, I mean, again, everything that I'm doing is something that I've learned when I was growing up as a, well, growing up, as I was developing as an athlete. Um, a rowing coach was someone that I looked out to quite early on. The first being Darren Neal, who was um, at CrossFit Club the Row. That was right. the main box that I was going to early on in my career. Um, and then, you know, I've had help from Shane Farmer, who does dark horse rowing. He's, he's 
assist in San Diego. Cameron Nickel. Um, yeah, those those three mainly. And it's what, what I learned from the rowing there. And also had a similar things with like running training, swimming training, bike, you know, biking. And what I learned from them all is that like it's all how you train for those things is the same. Yeah. Um, like how you approach, like the principles are the same. Yeah. The techniques are obviously different. Um, but then how to how to train for those things and make it relevant to CrossFit is very similar. So you've got like the 500 meter repeats on a, on a rower. Yeah. You've also got the two minutes on, one minute off on a bike. It's the same. It's yeah. the same thing. It, it's it's just like a little bit different. It's just you know wrapping it up in some different um, wrapping paper. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's it was like it was taking CrossFit and identifying what the needs of CrossFit are, and then how can we use the machines so that when we're using the machines, it's transferring as much as possible over into what we're going to get tested in in CrossFit. Yeah. And a five and five hundred meter repeat. If you think what you know, what pace you're using there, that's that kind of mimics most of your like ten minute workout thresholds. Yeah, um, like that pace that you can hold on the rower, and uh, yeah, and that's like the main time frame in the open anyway yeah. um, that you get tested on in and around ten minutes, just like that that lactate like, threshold kind of level. Um, so that's why the 500s were good, and you know, we, we changed the rest periods to kind of alter, alter the intensity and volume. And, um, yeah, and it just developed, it developed over time. But it's it's quite repetitive. But if anything that I've learned about anything CrossFit is it needs to be repetitive for it to get um, like long-standing results. Yeah. Um, something that just gets results within three weeks probably takes one week to reverse one week to reverse that um so it's yeah it's uh it can like you can buy into the fact that it being repetitive you start people start enjoying the fact that if you can just compare that one that session every week it's not yeah. exactly the same each week but you split for eight eight intervals you're going to be the same for 10 and then you'll be like right well i've done 10 at the same speed of the day like and then you get that you could draw that from it and then you've done 12 and then you go back and you do eight with a slightly lower rest period and you're still holding the same split um, and you can just get that direct feeling that you're improving yeah. and developing as an athlete and I think that week by week just helps keep people kind of like motivated that you know they're on a, a journey where they're going to improve rather than just kind of if they just did a, a random pull up rowing session out of anywhere each week and you couldn't compare yourself to how you're progressing, your motivation would probably go because you'd, although it's it's fun and varied at the time, you know, six weeks of fun and varied it equals someone who's who's you know a bit lost and they don't really know what direction to go in because it's too varied. Yeah, for sure. Um, and it, like to compare it to something like weightlifting, obviously it's easy to see kilograms going on the bar every week, but yeah, I mean, exactly. it's hard when you're doing rowing split in rowing intervals to be like, oh row hard for 60 seconds well what, what's rowing hard you know what i mean like you can what yeah. you're saying is weightlifting is better than rowing aren't you <laughs> <laughs> right, let, let, let's just agree that first off anyway <laughs> <laughs> whoa whoa <laughs> it's the only <laughs> thing i'm good at didn't you move from crossfit to weightlifting at one point yes yeah so after 2017 season after that that appearance at the games like Weightlifting was always something I got my numbers up to a decent level on, and it, they just dropped down slightly as I as I then tailored towards a CrossFit competition, which is expected for me anyway. That's how I had to do it. Um, so my numbers would always get to like quite a competitive weightlifting level, and then I would then go off and do CrossFit, and then they drop down a little bit. Yeah. And I just thought, right, I've done done team games now, done individual, those times at regionals, um, I'll give weightlifting to go if I can if I can say that I've been an individual games athlete team games athlete and then British weightlifting champion you know it, it it was something I felt like I could do and would be like a nice thing to add on to me uh, achievements and uh yeah I qualified for British um and it was uh, I think it was like July time it was supposed to be and this this was about six months before and um I got 
uh, I got asked to go down to f some filming for the Royal Marines, Royal Marines, which was the the, the idea was to, to make a commercial that showed all the athletes from different sports how they found Royal Marines training. Yeah. Uh, okay. So I was like, yeah, count count me in. I'm all over it. Like I, I love that type of love that type of stuff. Yeah. And it was a great it was a great day to fair and got blasted around the uh, assault course and then. The very last thing of the day, we had to wrestle one of the Marines, and um, these these lads actually that were the, the PTIs, three of them were on GST compete program. <laughs> right. And, uh, <laughs> so they knew they knew me. I knew them. Yeah. Anyway, we had a little tussle. The the guy that was on before me was Sebastian Eubank, who's Chris Eubank's. Right. Uh, um, Chris Eubank, Chris Eubank, the legend. Chris Eubank. Yeah. His um, stepson. Right. Um, or maybe he was his son, but he was a stepbrother of Eubank Jr. I can't remember. Yeah. Anyway, he was, he was a pro boxer. Uh, that's all he needs to know. <laughs> and so obviously he'd done a bit of grappling and he got a little bit of the better of this Marine. So I think his mates, were, his, the other Marines were winding him up. And then I jumped in. I didn't have a clue what I was doing. I've only ever wrestled like Jack on the gym floor and made him tap out within 10 seconds. <laughs> uh, so... That's going to be the title of this podcast, by the way. <laughs> yeah. I made Jack tap out in 10 seconds. <laughs> you know he, there, was one, there was one time he ate my, my Reese's peanut butter cups. Oh, yeah. Uh, so I, I, I ran at him and, I, and, I, and, I, and within 10 seconds he tapped out and said, sorry. <laughs> Don't uh, steal my peanut butter cups. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that's completely understandable. <laughs> <laughs> the rage. Yeah, it was just rage. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so I, I got into this ring with a, with a guy and, you know, I, I give him I give him a little bit and I, he moved a bit and I don't know if his mates were giving him some jit, but he flipped me on my back and dislocated my shoulder. Nice. Put, my shoulder put my arm in an arm bar and, and dislocated my shoulder. Yeah. So yeah. that was weightlifting career ended. <laughs> Shit. But, but then so you did go on to compete at the, the whole... games after that, didn't you? So like, you come back from that yeah. eventually, long term. Yeah, I got back from that. It, I, was, I was good with my rehab. And I think the good thing was I got in so quick to get it um, to get it operated on. Right. Um, there we go. We're back on. Yeah, we're good. Uh, yeah, I got it in. I got in and got operated so quick. There wasn't any mus muscle wastage or weakness. Yeah. That it didn't. The rehab was 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 quick. It set me back. It took me. It probably put me a year out. Yeah. Um, the I think the following years open though I won a strict hands and push up workout in the UK and that was me back on the scene. <laughs> yeah, I actually I remember a video of you doing. Didn't you do fifty strict unbroken or something like that? Close. It... Yeah, that that was uh, that was last year sometime. It was the lads were all egging me on. I think Daniel Scott, one of our athletes, done forty in forty seconds, and they were all they were all saying, "No, you can't do that anymore. Forty, you've passed it." You've, you've not got that in the locker, and I just, I was just like, right. Oh no, he did forty in sixty seconds, and uh, I was like, well, I can beat, I can beat it easily. And they were like, no, you can't, no, you can't. And they, and I wasn't even that bothered about doing it, but I was like, right, here we go. Took me top off, a little warm up, a few shoulder circles, and I did four, forty four in forty seconds. And uh, it's I, just said, I was just like, do you want me to carry on, or do you just wanted to leave it there? So, yeah, I told them. Love it. Love I love it. it. Yeah, a nice, nice for it. Um, so, I want to ask as well. You know, obviously, you're you're kind of in charge of bringing through some of the UK's up and coming CrossFit athletes. Uh, I know, obviously, Jack helps you out with that, and you've got a few coaches that that are um, helping you out. But obviously, what's it like working with like the promising athletes, like obviously Red J, um, Taylor. Uh, is Shrunky still still with you guys as well? Shrunky, yeah, Shrunky, yeah. yeah. He's obviously going to the games this year. Um, yeah. Hopefully. Uh, um, but yeah, so what, what's it like bringing up the, the promising young athletes? Or yeah, young, it's uh, uh, first of all privilege that like they they choose us to um, coach them and teach them what 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 we know and what we've learned. Um, so it's a, a nice feeling that we're getting the kind of you know the good younger athletes seeing us as the as the guys to go to. That's always what I've wanted to do after my career as an athlete. Is then 
pass on again all the knowledge that I had to, to other people. Um, so yeah, it's, it's cool. And then uh, like my main, so obviously Reggie works with Jack, but yeah. I have an input there and, and help Jack with Reggie and, and chat to Reggie often. Um, Taylor, uh, I, I work closely with Taylor and more recently Ella Wilkinson. Nice. Um, I got, they're probably the younger ones. Yeah, yeah. Everyone else is like, not past it, but you know, like Shunky's age, like current <laughs> athlete. Um, so, yeah, and I just get a lot of satisfaction out of, um, I feel like what I was best at as an athlete was understanding myself and understanding like how to approach workouts and how to yeah. like approach training day to day off my own feet and that's what I try and get across in um, with, with my athletes is trying to like to Taylor was an example is when we started she was just like tell me what I'll do I'll do it and it's like it's, it's great to have that attitude but what she's got a lot better at is then understanding herself because she knows herself more than I'll ever know her yeah. or she knows herself better than I'll ever know her so giving her the you know the, the information or the resources to be able to then make the right decision whatever it is if it's a day-to-day in training obviously i'll give her the training content and, and guide her but i'm not going to be holding my hand in the middle of an, of an event in the games you know i'm not going to be there to tell her to, to break this setup now she needs to be there and making those decisions in the moment herself so she needs to have she, she needs to have that and the other athletes you need to be able to work like that day to day in training. Um otherwise they will just fall apart when um you know when when competition comes or you know when they, when I'm not by the side. Which yeah. when you when you're remote coach and you're not by the side all the time. Yeah for sure. In, interestingly actually when when we spoke to Carrie Pace um I remember thinking the similar thing. Uh, hopefully, she won't listen to this because she probably think I'm a right knob now. But um, she basically she turned around and was like, "Oh yeah, like my coach would normally be there to tell me to like loosen my grip and stuff like that." Obviously, she fell off the rings, and that was the running joke that we were laughing about there. But yeah. I remember thinking to myself, like, shouldn't like you what should ideally you don't need your coach for that because you should know that, that you're going to break. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. And, but I'm not about to tell a games athlete how to be coached because, you know, <laughs> I was yeah. like, exactly. what did you like you to back yourself? I'll back myself. I'll go for it. <laughs> Especially not a gym now. <laughs> yeah, no, right. <laughs> so, sorry, how, how do you do those strict handstand push ups again? Show us your over a position, mate. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 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 Uh, yeah, I know, and that's that's the main thing. Again, that's that's what I found has been my best attribute as an athlete is that, you know, I take on information from anyone and and, you know, use it. But I always knew, I felt that I knew my, myself better, um, or myself well enough to be able to make my own decisions. And it's, it's why I've never really had my own like coach to like just coach me like one coach that coaches me I've, I've had multiple coaches but it's it's not really been like that relationship where you know, I just do what this coach says like I've always had whether it's a bit of a control freak uh, thing or um, it's that I, I do feel like athletes should be able to understand themselves to a, to a high level and even the guys on the 40 pound program you know we're, we're giving them out information and things that will help them understand that um, so it's not just live or die by this program that's written out in front of them. They can make well-informed, logical, good decisions about their lifestyle, the day of training they've got. You know, so they so they can always get the best out of every training day. I think it's important yeah. that because, like, I think for the majority of us, if you look at a program, like, it's I have to get through this. I can't change this. If it's wrote in front of me, I will die or finish it. Do you know what I mean? So I think yeah. it's important that like you can get that across to people. Like, look, if you, you know, if I don't know, if you've not had a lot of sleep the last couple of weeks, do you know I mean you've got a lot going on or whatever, and you need to, you know, make these changes, then <laughs> do so, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it's it is and it is a hard balance because there's many times where I'd i got it got it wrong. Um and probably always I would always just just crack off if in doubt I'd crack on and then I would then always 
down the line, I would get a little bit of a niggle or just, you know, be past the fatigue level I needed to get to and it would have gone too, too much. But obviously you learn from that. But it's having, it's, it's knowing when, which is the hard uh, thing to grasp. And you can only know when, when you fully understand, know yourself in the situation that, that you're in. Because, you know, most people should be doing, the, you know, a lot of people don't want to do rowing intervals. They don't want to do 10 500s. Oh my gosh. Nearly, <laughs> nearly the, nearly the 2k pace, like no one wants to do it, let's be honest, no one enjoys it, maybe Reggie might enjoy it a little bit, but I bet he doesn't enjoy it. <laughs> Reggie's broke, you don't count. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, but like, it needs to be done, as yeah. long as you're doing it, and you're not, that session is not going to absolutely write you off for a week, if it's just going to write you off the rest of that day and sound the next day, then crack on. Yeah, um, sure. You know, if you've got, if you've got, if you've not got to then go to work and look after, you know, two kids for the rest of that day, which is then going to impact your life. You know, it all it's all relative of what people's yeah. situations are in. Yeah. Um, if, if sending it at two k pace is gonna um, potentially make your wife split up with you because you've you've just not contributing to um, anything else over in life, then maybe don't send it at two k pace. Send it at five k pace. And, and no boy, your wife is to you, doesn't it? Yeah, you've got to get your priorities right. <laughs> Love it. So, obviously, moving on from obviously coaching the current like the current up, up and coming athletes, um, what what do you believe are the main things that have changed since like so obviously 2015 when you were training for the games to um, training for the games now? What how how do you coach elite athletes now as opposed to how maybe you would have coached an elite athlete back then or yourself um i think it goes what we were just saying then like five years ago i would because i was in that like more in that athlete zone it would be more like i would be more do it it was it'd be do as i say a little bit more like this is the best way to do it just go and do it and if you can't if you can't do it then just just like jog on but a bit more understanding of like different people's situations and how different athletes work in terms of like personality and mindset to be able to get the best out of any athlete no matter kind of like what the background is or you know what how they how they react to certain coaching styles yeah. uh, and I think it's just helped how I've come about that is just being able to work with so many you know and have access to so many different athletes training that we got 350 odd on, on the program and you know I've had around 10, 10 individuals um, consistently over those five years and just being able to work with a range of athletes just opens my eyes to okay that it's not always like this is the one way to do it this yeah. is how you know it, it never has been this but like this is how I got to the games this is how you need to do it like it's, it's never has been that attitude but it's more so like right well this is how I got to the games not saying that you have to do it, but it's the similar principles. We just need to apply them so that it works the best yeah. uh, for you. Yeah, yeah sure. Um, so you could say I've got a little bit softer over the five years, but I think it's just more intelligent. Yeah. We'll go. We'll go with more intelligent. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> um. So, obviously. Competing at the games, there's always some good stories that come out of that, and I like I like to ask, um, what's a funny story? And it can be competing in Waterpalooza as well, where obviously you're you're over with um, uh, Reggie and the guys who competing. As I know, he wasn't competing with Reggie's team, but he was on a team. Um, yeah. What's a funny story that you can tell? Because we know we know there's going to be loads that you probably can't tell because <laughs> you got a business to run. Um, but, <laughs> Uh, look, there's, there's loads of like little, little it's all, like, a couple of weeks before a competition when, when you travel out somewhere and you're with a team or you're with a group of athletes like I always say like that's the most fun time training's died down a little bit because you're kind of safer and, and that's where you know you can you need those fun times just to like chill you out so you don't get too overly like stressed out about the competition so that's yeah. usually where you know some funny stuff happens the most recent one I remember we, we went to Miami there was um it was me, Mikey, Taylor, and, and Nettie. We shared a uh, like an apartment. Obviously, being gentlemen, we let the girls take the bedroom and the double bed. Yes, we're good guys. And me and Mikey took the uh, the fold fold out sofa bed. 
and uh, Reggie slept on our pillows, no, the, the armrest pillows of the couch on the floor next to me and Mikey because he couldn't be, he didn't want to go back and, and stay in a hotel room, which was like 20 minutes into uh, downtown Miami. Um, and Reggie, say, Reggie says to me, I'll be careful, Steve, because Mikey's been known to stick a finger up your bum in the middle of the night. And I was like, <laughs> You know what Reggie's Red like? He's just like, yeah, whatever, Reggie. He's just another one of those things that he's just chatting shit and he's just come out of it. And then Mikey's just like, yeah, this happened, this happened. And then, like, the middle of the night, the next day, like, the next day, I'm, I'm fast asleep <laughs> and I just get his finger go right at my bum. And I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> And I look round and Mikey's just, like, dead asleep. And like Reggie's nowhere near me, and I've definitely just received his <laughs> finger up my bum. And, uh, and yeah, so yeah, Mikey put his finger up my bum. So, 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 wow. So Mikey's a sleep finger. That's the. Yeah, that's the yeah. <laughs> <laughs> some people sleepwalk. Some people. Sleep. <laughs> yeah, he's, yeah, he sleep talks a lot as well, and and, and walks. He's uh, yeah, he's, he's a funny guy, he's Mikey, but yeah, definitely. Awesome. definitely Mike, let's get him on the podcast. I don't want to sleep next yeah. to him at night, but I'll get him on the podcast to find <laughs> yeah. out a bit more about this. <laughs> Lesson learned, don't share a baby Mikey, there you go. <laughs> um, no, no wonder he's got a, no wonder Reggie's got a 200 key front squat. That's uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think Steve's got out, but we'll uh, there it is. <laughs> Not sure if we've cut out, but anyway, we'll. Uh, I'm not sure if Steve can hear us or not. Um, my time he, again. I know. <laughs> my, my, Mikey, Mikey was like, "Cancel the podcast, <laughs> but cancel the podcast." Um, I still need to ask him about Wardy being better than him at football. That's the, that's that's the last question. Yeah, I've just I've just seen that. I've just seen that. I think. Oh, there we go. We've oh, got... there we go. I think I'm back on. Yeah, you're back. Yeah, you're back. I don't think we're going long. We're going long. We, we were just saying that we think Mikey's got control of the podcast, it's sound. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I, didn't, I didn't want to leave the note on a bum finger, so I just put it on. If we ended the podcast there, most pop, popular podcast yet. Yeah, yeah. I'll make you take over. Just wait till the tagline comes on. <laughs> yeah, make sure that's the intro there. Yeah. Mike just put his finger on the bum. We're going to go to town on that one. Well, yeah, we're gonna. Uh, I, I've been playing around with how, how we can have uh, like little intros at the start of the podcast. They're just like, I, I think I think that might have to be the one. Um, yeah, do it. <laughs> so, a couple of quick questions left, Steve, before we move on yeah. to the fun ones. Um, obviously. We've got to ask you as well, um, something that you used to believe in that has since changed for you. So something that you were like adamant about, but since uh, in the last 12, 18 months, you've sort of changed your mind on that you could, that, that would be helpful to athletes or people trying to get better at CrossFit. Competing with children is easy. <laughs> I, I agree. <laughs> Competing with children is easy. All right. <laughs> no. No, no, it's not. I, I agree. I, I only have months ago, I thought it was all right. No, it's not. Josh, Josh has got this to come. Yeah, good luck. I'm, I'm personally looking forward to watching the, the meltdown. It'll be good. Um, <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Um, and we've got to ask you as well. So I don't know whether you remember, you used to play football with one of our coaches, a guy called Craig Ward, known as Warder. Yeah. yeah. Um, and he, he claims that he was better than you at football. I mean, you've got him at CrossFit, that's for certain. But yeah. is it true? Is he was he better than you, or is he talking out of his ass? I mean, to be fair, he played he played at a, uh, well. We played in the same club together, Ashton Town. But he was, um, yeah. I w at the time, I would say he was, he was better. At the but, time, um, <laughs> yeah. Like I said, I was I was always a decent player, but I was never best. Warnie was, yeah. was centre back. So I'll tell you what, he's better at heading the ball, but I was better at throwing it. We were probably saying everything else. Yeah, sounds about right. Big yeah. old Wardy header. <laughs> yeah, Wardy header, that's all I remember him by. He probably, <laughs> he, the only thing he remembers me by is being able to throw the ball far at that. He did tell me the other day, his dad told him he should he should just uh, play football with his head and not his feet. So. <laughs> 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 
Awesome, awesome. Uh, so, Steve, got a couple of quick fire questions just to, to wrap it up. Um, yeah. First one is: Have you got a book or a film recommendation that you um, that you think everybody should watch or read? Um, I don't. Know if it's not a film. I, I recently watched the Michael Jordan series. Um, Great documentary. And like those type of documentaries where like an ex sports person who's been like to the top are always like really insightful so there's that one and there's loads of little documentary that Sky Sports did during coronavirus right. about uh, ex-players and stuff like that um, but yeah like the Michael Jordan uh, the Michael Jordan ones nice. good I'm a bit like Reggie and Taylor I can't I can barely see my phone in front of my face here. I'm not great I can read but my but eyes just go blurry after 10 minutes so um, that's too many handstand push-ups there I think I've damaged, damaged <laughs> Yeah, I, I wouldn't have that problem. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, um, another one would be uh, what if you could have a go at any other profession? What would it be? Cycling. Cycling. Nice. I like what, it. Was... What a, it's what I'm following now. Right. Ah, okay. Oh, cool. I like it. Um, and last but not least, podium pick for what's the biggest dick gym move? So. What's, what's one thing you see somebody do in the gym that winds you up no end? Um, you know, you know when you know when uh, someone's ski, using a ski erg, yeah, and like there's no, there's no, not not letting go. But there's like there's no control. Like you going up and coming back down, and it's like it's like you just yank them, and then the the, the strings of the ski erg like lose tension and then regain it. The same in a row when the chain whips up and down. It's just like, what? I think he's cut out again, but I get a book. That's how frustrated he that is. <laughs> just like, realise that what you're doing is not right and change. <laughs> realise you're doing it wrong, you fucking yeah. dickhead. Yeah. <laughs> just, I think he's seen me do his gear. That's what that one is. <laughs> probably one of the biggest. Awesome. Yeah, working. I think. Right, there we go. Yeah, we're back again. Right, uh, right, Steve. Last few quick again. Look, these are really super quick fire questions. It's just what you prefer, this or that. Yeah. So first one, yeah. uh, since you've already had the answer to this one, would be snatch or clean and jerk. Obviously, you like clean and jerk. Oh, we've got a robot, Steve. Now this is good. Um, and then, oh. run, running or rowing? Broke today. Running. Like, <laughs> that sounded like running. I think we've got running. Definitely running. There we Definitely go. Definitely running. Um, front squat or back squat? Back squat. Oh, Pizza or ice cream? Pizza. Cookies or donuts? Cookies. Football or CrossFit? CrossFit. Ooh, it's close to <laughs> <laughs> CrossFit Games gold medal or one million pounds? Uh, gold medal. Yeah. yeah. That's, the, that's, the, that's the deciding one, whether the podcast, the podcast gets posted yeah. or not. <laughs> <laughs> the right answer. Money, come, definitely money, money comes and goes. Games <laughs> medals don't. Nice. I love it. Right, guys. Steve, thank you very much for joining us today. You've not um, asked me my favourite swear word. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you, have that one, you have that one lined up. Go on, then. What's your favourite swear word? Get fucked. Get <laughs> fucked. It's because you've swore on the podcast. I tend to save that one for when people don't ask. When oh, people yeah. don't well, swear. Well, you still ask. You still ask Reggie, and it, every second word was one. That's because that's because Reggie swore loads. <laughs> <laughs> We've seen how creative he is. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, like I said, really appreciate your time today, Steve. Um, awesome fun. Um, obviously, before we go, guys. I, We'd like to thank our sponsor, X Endurance. Um, use the code AgogiTV20 at xendurance.eu to get 20% off at checkout. Um, Steve, where do people find you before we go, mate? Uh, what do you mean, my address? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Don't, that half broken house in Wigan. Full, yeah. <laughs> full no, of uh, He's not there anyway. There'll just be Reggie there training in the garage. Yeah, um, <laughs> no, Instagram, there's a, uh, yeah, my Instagram is Stevie, uh, S T E V E Y F 22, or JST Compete is at JST underscore Compete. Awesome. Love it. Um, uh, any sponsors, anyone else that you want to mention before we go? Um, that's the main. I think he said that's the main ones. Awesome. The main thing, really, I'm not going to give anyone my phone number off my head. <laughs> you don't want to give your phone. You don't want to give your phone number out to the 350 people on JST Compete. Is that not? A... <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, I just get, I just get, I get abuse. I get abuse as it is. More abuse. Tell me that 21:59 is impossible today. Has your mum got a ski erg in her house? Is that going? Is that what's going on there? Are you, were you, you going to show us your ski erg technique? Yeah, and this is my mum's. <laughs> this is this is my mum's gym. Why this has your mum got a better gym than me? My mum. Why's your mum got so many plaques? That's what I want to know. Uh, my mum's sixty-one, and she does CrossFit every morning at half five. Wow, that's what it, amazing. What it, awesome. As well. No way. Brilliant. There you go. Sign up for JST. CrossFit <laughs> 65. Still doing CrossFit 65. Amazing. Um, so, guys, as usual, please like, subscribe, and share. Um, if you can, give us a, a review on iTunes. And if you're on YouTube, hit that subscribe <laughs> button. Really appreciate it. Um, I think Steve's just cut out again, but we thank him very much for joining us again, guys. And um, hope everybody enjoyed the show. Peace.